Have you ever felt lost and unsure what you should be focusing on? Well, these 20 lessons from the book Essentialism really helped me with that and hopefully it can help you as well. Don't work harder. Most of us are taught from an early age that working harder will give us more results. And for the most part, uh, that's worked to a certain level for us throughout our lives, but it is not the most efficient way of doing things. Back at my first job, I was making $10 an hour for years. So I would trade one hour of my life for $10. But then I started to read books, I started to gain skills that were actually valuable and look for other work, and I moved up to 20 to $25 an hour. So while I could have just remained at where I was and kept working harder to make that money, I was able to double how much that hour made. It's moved from $10 an hour to 20 to 50 to 100 to multiple hundreds, reaching levels I never would have even thought about if I had never taken a step back and asked, is this what I should even be doing and not just trying to work hard but trying to work smarter. Choices. We often think about choices as a thing, but they are actually an action. Options are actually a thing, and sometimes we don't actually have control over what our options are. It's gonna depend on your circumstances, where you're from, a million different things, but something that we do have control over that is super liberating once you realize this is that we have control over our choices, over the actions that we take off of those options. Trade-offs. This was one of the things that completely change how I think about everything. And this is the idea of trade-offs. Every time you say yes to one thing, by default, you're saying no to something else. Like if I choose to eat a bowl of ice cream, then I'm probably not gonna be hungry enough to have maybe an apple or some fruit. Every time I choose to eat one thing that's bad, I am in turn saying that I'm not gonna eat something that's good. So it's not only one action that you have to think about what you're missing out on. It's kind of the idea of opportunity cost. If you spend $1,000 on a new iPhone, that's $1,000 that's not gonna be invested, that you're not gonna earn 10% a year on for the next 30 years. Years, every action has a reaction and you have to ask yourself every time you spend money, you eat something, you sit on the couch instead of going to the gym, all of those, you say yes to an opportunity. What are you saying no to by doing this thing? It will completely <laughs> change your life. By the way, if you're enjoying this and you want to support the channel, then don't forget to subscribe. Become unavailable. We need to escape in order to have space and really like mental capacity to discern what are those few important things and what are the trivial many things. Unfortunately, a lot of our lives are just packed to the gills with stuff. We just have so much going on with work and there's constantly more. We're attached to our phones 24 seven. We come home, the TV is on, the radio's on, people are calling us, we have responsibilities. And a lot of times we can't take a step back and ask if this is even the direction we should be going. He talks about this executive that worked at a company five years longer than he should have because he was constantly so busy working in this business that he didn't think about, should I even be at this business where we don't take time to actually shut off our phones, take some time, whether it's an, an hour or a week by yourself and just ask, why am I working so hard? Should I even be working this hard and running this fast in this direction? Or should I take a step back and, and, and shift over this direction or go back the other way? And a lot of times we won't have clarity on that decision unless we take some time to be bored, to not have our phone, to think about the big picture, to go for a walk something that a lot of us don't feel like we even have time for. The problem with priorities. If someone was to ask you, what are your top priorities right now? You might list out five, maybe 10 different things. Some people, it might be 20. But interestingly enough, the word priority came into the English language in the 1400s and it was singular. And it stayed as a singular word for the next like 500 years until the 1900s when we turned it into a plural and that is priorities. We thought by changing the word, we could change realities, but you can't have multiple priorities. You have to have one thing that you focus on. We have all these different units of energy that are going in all these different direction on these top priorities, but we're not gonna make as much progress on that unless we can stack all of those units all into one 
thing that we can be amazing at instead of being just average at a bunch of things. So if you have 20 priorities, you don't have a priority. Decision fatigue. The more decisions we are forced to make, the lower quality those decisions end up being. This is the idea of decision fatigue. And in today's world, we have more choices than we've probably ever had throughout history. We have our phone that has a thousand things that we could do on it constantly. We have companies spending billions of dollars to steal some of our attention. We have so many different options of what to wear, where to work, what to do with our day that we end up with decision fatigue and make poor choices. Well, this is why I love the idea of kind of making your life as automatic as possible by setting up good routines. If you have an extremely simple wardrobe, then you don't really have to think about what to wear each day. If you have a nice morning routine, you don't have to think about what you're doing for the first hour, and yet you get a lot of stuff done. If we can build healthy, solid routines that work on autopilot, then we can kind of take out a lot of those decisions so that when there are super important things that we need to focus on, like what is our main thing in life, we're not already worn out from all the other decisions we've been making. This is where we try to find that one decision that will make a thousand decisions for us in the future. By saying no to starting this club or leading something or starting this new business or venture or saying yes to something at work or whatever it is, you're saying no to this thing once and therefore that's a thousand more things that you won't have to worry about in the future. And so we look through our lives and we say, what can we say no to now that will save us an infinite amount of decisions later on down the road? Ask different question. So let's say that you're cleaning out your closet. What most people will do is they will ask, will I ever wear this again? Or is there a chance that I'll ever wear this in the future at some point? Uh, and most likely if you ask that question, the answer will be yes. And therefore you have a closet that is stuffed to the gills and you can't get rid of any more stuff. It also applies to most everything uh, that you're decluttering in your life, whether that's tasks or just random stuff around your house. But we need to switch what questions we are asking. And when it comes to stuff in your personal life as well, we have to ask the same questions. Will this activity or this effort make the highest possible contribution towards my goals? And if not, should I even be doing it? Sunk cost bias. Now again, let's say you're going through your closet and you have a pile of stuff that you think you should get rid of. It didn't really reach that 90%, but you feel bad getting rid of it because you spent money on it. There's been studies that people value things that they possess more than other people value those same things. So we have this idea that if I own it, it it's worth more. There's sentimental reasons you spent money on it, whatever it is, it's really hard to let go of things. And that is because of the sunk cost bias. <coughs> So a question that really has helped me as a very frugal person, it's hard to get rid of stuff. Uh, even though I bought way less stuff in the past couple of years, I still have stuff that I get rid of that maybe I haven't even used before. And I ask this question. If I didn't own this thing, how much would I pay to buy it? Generally asking that question reveals how much you really value that thing, unless you're lying to yourself and you're, you're telling yourself you would spend that money again. But if you haven't used it in a couple of years, then most likely you wouldn't spend much money to repossess that thing. And therefore you should just let it go or maybe even try to sell it and make some money. The power of small wins. Research has shown that the most powerful form of all human motivations is progress. And that's because as you get a small win, a small victory, that starts to build confidence in yourself that you can achieve this. Even if it's the smallest thing, like you wake up, you do your teeth, you read a page of a book, you don't check your phone for the first hour of the day, you will feel like you've already accomplished a couple things on your list. You'll have all this motivation just by doing a few small things that literally take a few minutes and that can set up the rest of your day for success. So break things down as easy as possible. Create some small wins for yourself for whatever goal you're trying to achieve and then just let that bad boy snowball. All right, here are three questions that you should ask in order to find your thing that you can really go all in at. First, ask what deeply inspires you? Then, what am I particularly talented at? And finally, what will make a significant impact in the world? Honestly, you're, you're probably not gonna be able to come up with anything uh, right off the bat, which will lead to exploration, which we'll talk about in a second. But we're not looking for a, a million results on this. We're looking for what is your 
one thing. So the criteria has to be extremely narrow. And this is really where kind of the, the next point of exploration comes in, so where a lot of times non-essentialists will just do whatever opportunity comes up without really thinking about it. Whereas uh, he talks about the essentialist specifically going out and trying new things with the intent of finding that one thing that is their thing. So specifically going out and trying a bunch of different jobs or ideas until they find that one thing that sticks. I've tried honestly probably like 15 or 20 different jobs and side hustles and starting businesses and being actually working for people, which I found out that I hated, but I wouldn't have found that out if I didn't actually try it until I randomly stumbled across by trying all these things. My one thing that I love to do, I'm relatively talented at, and I think actually makes an impact in the world, and that is YouTube. And when I found that one thing, I was able to focus in on that and shut off everything else so that I can make my highest level of contribution. It took me years of stumbling around trying different things, but eventually I was able to find that, which I might not have been able to find if I had continually just been grinding at one thing and never tried and failed at all those other things. Now this leads us into the power law. Most of us think that we can draw a line between effort and results. But according to the power law theory, certain efforts leads to exponentially bigger results. Like if you look at top engineers compared to regular average engineers, the top ones don't just 10x what the average ones do, they might 100x or 1000x what those others do. There are certain things in every business and every relationship that lead to an insane amount of results. This is kind of the idea of the 80-20 rule where 80% of the results come from 20% of the actions. So really trying to focus in and find those few things that will lead to a crazy amount of results instead of focusing on all the busy work and all the normal stuff that clogs everybody up from doing those few important tasks. And while it's hard to find those things, if you can find them, it's life-changing. How to stick to a new habit. So let's say that you want to pick up journaling and you've tried it and maybe the first day you write an entire page and then the next day you write like half a page and then a week later you're like, man, this, this just takes too much time. This sucks. I can't think about what to write. Maybe I have too much on my mind. And the same thing happens every year with New Year's resolutions where you go to the gym, you destroy yourself the first day. After about a week, you're, you're done with your New Year's resolution. So how do you make that stick? And the solution is to do less than you feel like. It's this whole idea of less but better, which encompasses the entire book and really uh, it encompasses a lot of how I try to live my life. Instead of writing a, a page a day, write one sentence every day. That's something you can stick to. You can do it in like 15 seconds if you had to, but you consistently do something small that is achievable until you build up that habit. And even then, always write less than you want to. When you go to the gym, commit to going for two minutes or five minutes or eight minutes. It's this idea of consistently going and building that habit that over the long term can completely change your life. And it's a lot easier to stick to that habit. And I know for most people, once you walk in the gym doors and you only have to work out for eight minutes, you're either gonna get a wicked good workout in <laughs> in eight minutes or you're gonna to wanna to stay longer. But instead of always trying to do more, consistently try to do less than you feel like you should. And in turn, you'll be able to stick to that habit no matter how you feel because it's actually pretty easy to do. You're gonna die. One of the top regrets of people at the end of their lives is that they didn't live a life that was true to themselves. And instead they did what other people expected of them. In order to, to not live a life on somebody else's terms, you have to say no kind of like aggressively and not just to the obvious time wasters, but also maybe to the really good opportunities. Uh, and this was something that really struck me recently because I've had so many different opportunities. Uh, I had a podcast for a while. I thought about starting a second channel. I've got, I get other offers to do random stuff. I could write a book. I could actually get a job doing something else. And I have all these opportunities. But in order to have freedom to do the things that are really important to me and kind of live my life through design and not just by default by whatever happens and have time to spend with my family and to create stuff that I love and to work on my health and hobbies, I have to actively say no to what could be extremely good opportunities and yes, miss out on those things in order to have freedom in my life. 
apply some zero-based budgeting to your life. So the idea of zero-based budgeting, especially when it applies to your life, is this idea that nothing is already justified. Just because that's the status quo doesn't mean it should be that way. And it has to justify itself every single month. And we should apply this to our own lives as well. Like just because your morning routine is a certain way doesn't mean that's the best way it should be going forward. Just because you always volunteer for extra projects or you're involved in a bunch of different extra activities that take up your nights and weekends or just because you have this relationship with people who drain all of your creativity and your motivation and your excitement or even your wallet just because all of these things are normal in your life doesn't mean it has to stay that way or it should stay that way going forward in every month or every few months you should look at how you're spending your time and see if this is the best use of your time towards reaching your goals and if not you have to just cut it right out if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and let me know what book you'd like me to do next down in the comments thank you for watching till the end and i'll see you next week